Right. Uh, I'm Yotaro Hayakawur, uh, software engineer from Isobel, and uh, thanks for having me here. So I'm leading the development of the BGP control plane uh, in the Isobel and Cilium community. Thanks, Yotaro. Uh, so before we get into the details of BGP, uh, Yotaro and I thought it would be a good idea to spend just a few minutes kind of going through a networking primer to kind of set the foundation for BGP, right? So if we think of networking at the very basics of it, it's right, taking some computers, putting network cards in them, connecting them to some kind of network device like a hub or a switch so they're all fully connected. And then you assign uh, an IP network. Uh, and here you see uh, a network number and a mask or what uh, is called a CIDR block for this network. You make sure each host on that network uh, is assigned a unique uh, host number from that network, and then hosts can freely communicate with one another, right? Uh, so at layer two, they use uh, address resolution protocol, or ARP, to map the IP addresses to lower level MAC addresses, and they can just communicate directly to one another. Uh, now, this doesn't go very far, right? If you try to keep scaling this out and keep putting hosts on this network, you get to a point where the address resolution protocol that I was talking about, uh, you start getting a lot of broadcasts on the network, it becomes inefficient, and um, that's when multiple networks start getting involved. And when you start talking about multiple networks, uh, we have a new device uh, that gets introduced. And here we see four different networks, each with a router. And what you do is you uh, tell each of the hosts about their default gateway. So host, if you're unable to communicate with an address that is not local to you, right? If, it, if you want to communicate with some destination host and that host is not on your network, doesn't have the same network number as you, then you need to send those packets to your default gateway. And routers are responsible very simply for forwarding packets between the interfaces on that router to, to different networks. You may ask yourself, well, how do those routers know about those networks? Well, the first thing they do is they actually, each router creates a routing table, and that is a destination network that's associated to a next hop IP address and an outgoing interface, right? So packet comes in a router interface, it looks up and says, what destination is this IP address? Let me look at my routing table. Oh, it's going to go out this outgoing interface, and it's going to be this next hop IP address, which is typically another router. And how do routers learn about all these networks to put in the routing table, right? So you can statically configure those routes, but that doesn't scale well. In small environments, it's perfectly fine. But when you start talking about large enterprise networks, uh, service providers, and so forth, uh, routing protocols are used. And routing protocols are a process that runs on each of these routers. And those routing um, protocols send messages and receive messages on those different interfaces. And when it receives those messages and says, oh, here's another router that's speaking the same routing protocol that I'm speaking, oh, it's telling me about this network and the next hop to reach that network. So they're just sharing a, a, with each of the other routers what networks that the router knows. And then that information is used to build the routing tables. Now I want to talk about. Um, autonomous systems, right? So this is a higher layer of abstraction than a network number and mask. An autonomous system is a collection of networks that's under a common uh, administration or administrative control, right? And it presents a common routing policy, right? So uh, if you may be a large enterprise with thousands of locations and thousands of networks, but you as an enterprise have a common policy that you use on how you exchange routing information with other enterprises or with the service provider, the internet service provider that you use. And each autonomous system has an autonomous system number that's assigned by internet authorities. Could be a local authority. And that autonomous system number is used by BGP, which we'll show here uh, a little later. And I also want to make a distinction that there's two different classes of routing protocols. There's 
an interior gateway protocol and an exterior gateway protocol. BGP falls under an exterior gateway protocol and exterior gateway protocols, they're not meant to be used within the enterprise in the sense of exchanging routing information. They're meant to be used between autonomous systems. But what we're also gonna show is that BGP is becoming very popular in data center environments as well. And that's where we're gonna get into uh, some more details here a little later. Uh, but interior gateway protocols, they are typically used within the autonomous system to exchange routing information between different routing peers. And uh, things like OSPF, IS to IS, our um, IGRP are very common interior gateway protocols. But let me uh, hand it over to Yutro to talk more about BGP. All right, so what is BGP? So BGP is a protocol to exchange the route between the autonomous systems. That is the exterior uh, gateway protocol uh, that Daniel ex explained. And then the ultimate uh, like a purpose of the protocol uh, is figure out the shortest path uh, in the de uh, to the destination. Uh, and it is originally designed to like form the internet, uh, but the, it is becoming popular uh, in the data center networks, uh, data center networks as well. So that uh, so that's why we have the use cases in the Cilium uh, or the Kubernetes in general as well. Uh, and th the more important thing here is um, this is an IETF standard protocol. That means that you can exchange the uh, route with any devices uh, like, a, like a Cisco, uh, Juniper, uh, Arista, whatever the vendor is. Uh, you can exchange the route with those network gear uh, while we are supporting BGP. That is very powerful uh, thing uh, because uh, one, if we support the BGP, you can go, we can go beyond the the BGP, uh, no, sorry, the Kubernetes uh, cluster. So here's how it works in very high level. So this is uh, this shows the like a router A and router B and router C connected straightly. Oh, sorry, no, no this this way. Uh, so this topology connects the, the three routers uh, straightly, uh, and the like a router A uh, and B and B and C uh, connects the, uh, the ex like establish the BGP peer. Uh, and then like a, the first of all, the, the router A only knows uh, about the network uh, connected to itself. Uh, and then the router A uh, advertise the route uh, over BGP. And then now router B now uh, learns the route to the 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So th what, uh, what happens essentially here is router A says like, hey, router B, uh, if you see the packet going to 10.0.0.0 slash 24, I know how to forward it. Uh, I know how to get there. So please forward the packet to me. So this is what, what the, the router A says. Uh, and then the now the router B propagates uh, that information to router C, but the next hop rewritten to itself. So this is uh, so what the router B says in here uh, is essentially the hey router C, uh, if you see the packet going to 10.0.0.0/24, I know how to get there. So please forward the packet to me. This is uh, again this is what router B says. So. In this, uh, then uh, we now have the like a one directional uh, like a connectivity here, right? Uh, and then the opposite thing can happen in the in the return direction. So router C can advertise the route to the to it to their own network uh, to uh, to the router B, and router B propagates it to router A. Then we have uh, we have the connectivity for both direction. So let's. Now make the thing more complicated. So what happens if there are multiple paths to the same prefix? So in this case, hosting the left, left network can reach to the right network uh, in two ways, right? So router A, B, D, or router A, C, D. So BGP usually chooses the shortest path, um, but let's say uh, in this case, both paths have the exactly the same distance. So what to do? So BGP can uh, handle this situation in two ways. So the first way is breaking the tie in some way. Uh, there are multiple ways, but in some way. Uh, and choose only one route as a best path. 
So this is, uh, that means the, the forwarding the 100% of the traffic to the router view, for example. Another way is using both paths. So in this case, there are two paths. So 50% uh, of the packets goes to router B uh, and 50% uh, goes to router C. So in this case, is specifically called equal cost multipath. Uh, with these features, so we can essentially the load balance the, the traffic within the network. So uh, this is frequently used technique in the BGP network. Uh, and then we, ha we also have the use case that uses ECMP in Kubernetes as well. So let's talk about the uh, Cilium. So how BGP used in Cilium? So Cilium has a feature called BGP control plane. So it is a BGP implementation designed from scratch to be fully integrated with Cilium. So it plays very well with Cilium specific feature like group proxy replacement uh, or Cilium specific IPAM implementation like cluster pool IPAM, multi pool IPAM, and so on. So it is also Kubernetes native. So we eliminated the hard-coded IP address uh, co from configuration as much as possible because the IP address is very ephemeral uh, in, the, in the Kubernetes world. Uh, instead, we rely heavily on the labels uh, to configure the things. So here's how BGP peering works in Cilium. Uh, in Cilium BGP control plane, you can apply the BGP policies to the node by labels using Cilium BGP peering policy resource. So for example, in this topology, we have two racks and each rack have a top of rack router. And the nodes under the rack needs to make a peer with each router, right? So in this case, we can define two BGP peering policies. So one selects the nodes on the rack zero and make a peer with router B. And another makes, uh, selects the uh, nodes on rack one and make a peer with router C. So how the route advertisement works? So here's how route, uh, so one of the popular use case uh, of BGP in Kubernetes is uh, making the pods re uh, directly reachable from outside of the Kubernetes by advertising the pod cider assigned to the nodes. So when you want to do that, you can just turn on the flag export pod cider. Now, so that's Cilium. Uh, advertise the pod cider uh, assigned to the node to the upstream router, uh, router A. Uh, and then the workload outside of the cluster, uh, in this case node C, can directly uh, reach, to the, uh, reach to the pod uh, through this router. So with BGP, you can also implement the type load balancer service. So in the public cloud environment like GCP or AWS uh, and so on, uh, they provide you the load balancer implementation to you, right? But in the on-prem environment, it is not the case. You need to prepare the, the load balancer somehow in, by yourself. So with BGP control plane, you, know, you can easily implement load balancer service without having the special equipment like load balancer appliances. Uh, you can simply uh, select the service by labels. Uh, then Cilium will advertise the load balancer virtual IP uh, for those services. And then the upstream router can load balance the traffic uh, to each node uh, using ECMP, uh, we just explained. Uh, a few minutes ago. So this means that you can use the upstream router as an external load balancer. So this is nice because uh, one, we don't need to have the extra equipment. Uh, and two, the packet forwarding happens at the speed of hardware uh, on the router. So it is very fast. So the one last BGP use case we want to introduce is an integration with the multiple IPAM. So it is a feature, uh, multiple IPAM is a feature introduced in the latest uh, release of Cilium uh, that allows you to define the multiple pool of pod cider within the cluster. And Cilium BGP control plane now can selectively uh, advertise the pod cider allocated from the specific pool by selecting the Cilium pod IP pool risk resources by label again. Then uh, we'll demonstrate it to you. So now I'll pass the mic to Daniel, who contributed this uh, feature to the Cilium. Thanks, Chichiro. Uh, so uh, if you'd like to follow along or probably follow along at another time, we have a QR code to uh, the repo that has the instructions on how to run through the demo that we're going to talk through today. 
Uh, so we thought it would be a good idea, instead of just talking about BGP control plane and BGP, we'd actually show you BGP control plane in action. And so we have a very simple uh, demo environment that includes an external router here. It's depicted as router A. And then we have a Kubernetes cluster that has two nodes, node A and node B. And those nodes are uh, a control plane node and a worker node in uh, our demo environment. And then we actually have an external node that's simply represented as a Docker container uh, in our demo environment. And this acts as an external workload that we're gonna go ahead and show reachability into the pod IPs from this external workload. Um, and after the, after you see here, after the IPAM uh, ciders are announced using BGP control plane from the nodes to the external router, uh, then we'll, we'll have reachability here from the external workload to the internal workload running in our cluster. So uh, to speed things up a little bit, uh, I have already pre-provision the demo environment, which consists of creating a kind cluster um, and then using um, container labs to create a, a bunch of other nodes as well, and then stitching them all together. And, um, and again, if you take a look at the, 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 the demo repo, you can learn more uh, about the demo environment. Um, so actually, after creating the demo infrastructure, we go ahead and we install Cilium um, in the environment, and we wait for Cilium to be ready. And after Cilium's ready, what you'll see is, is Cilium also created two uh, pod IP pools, one called default, one called other. The other thing to make note is that these uh, pools have no labels associated to them. And if we take a look at these pod IP pools, you'll see that the uh, pod IP pool called default is from the 10.10.0.0 slash 16 CIDR, and it will go ahead and allocate slash 24 networks from that larger pool to Cilium nodes. And the same is done here for the other pool that we called other, but this is using the 10.20 network. Next thing we do is we create a workload in the cluster. And we'll see if that workload is ready. So it is running. And the thing to note here that I want to point out is look at the IP address that this workload gets. This workload was assigned an IP from the other pool and not the default pool. And the reason being is when we created this daemon set, we specified what pool that we wanted to use through an annotation. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create the BGP peering policies. We have two of them, one called control plane, one called worker. And what you'll see here is that those policies were realized here. Again, here's control plane, here's worker. And you'll see that we have BGP running on these two nodes, the control plane node and the worker node. And you see the local autonomous system and the peer autonomous system, the peer IP address, and the key being is a session state. BGP has different session states, but ultimately if a BGP session state's not in an established state, then there is no routes being exchanged between those two BGP speakers. One other thing to point out here too is you see received and advertised, zero. So no routes are being uh, received or advertised, but we do have an established peer. Each of the nodes, the worker node and the control plane node being peered with that external router that you saw uh, in the presentation. So if we do uh, peer policies, um, actually policy. Here's the BGP uh, peering policy on the control plane. And what you'll see here is as your Turo showed you in one of the slides, we use a node selector to attach this uh, a policy to a node within the cluster. So you could essentially even have one policy that gets attached to multiple nodes 
based on the selector, giving you that flexibility, right? The other things you see here is virtual routers, right? So we could actually run multiple BGP instances on this node. We have just a single BGP instance and we specify the local autonomous system um, along with the, the peer configuration for this instance of BGP, right? And if we look at the worker, we'll see a very similar configuration. The only differences that we're going to see for the worker node and the worker policy is that the worker policy gets attached to the worker node. And then it has a different local autonomous system, a different peer IP address because that external router has a multiple interfaces, different IP addresses, all right? Um, so what do we do next? We have peers, but we're not exchanging any routing information. So let's go ahead and first, let's update that peering, the peering policy of the control plane and the worker. And what you're gonna see here with this update is I'm now adding a pod IP pool selector uh, to both the control plane and worker policies that matches on the label foo bar, all right? And I'll just show you again here really quickly for the worker. You see that the worker's now been updated. There's that pod IP pool selector. And then, and uh, I'll do the same for the control plane. There's the pod IP pool selector, right? We're still not advertising any routes because advertising the, I, the, the pod IP pools is a two-step process. Remember I showed you that the, the, the default and other pod IP pool that was created during installation had no labels, right? So if we, if we have this pod IP pool selector saying, hey, match pod IP pools with this label of foo bar, it's not matching anything, right? So let's go ahead and label. So here I go ahead and add the label foo bar to both of those uh, IP pools, the other and the default. And now when we go and we see the peers, they're there, right? And wide. Now let's go ahead and test reachability from our external workload. Uh, so 10, 20, 0, 37. You see we've got reachability. And if I go ahead, I probably should have actually tested this before um, advertising. But if I go, so, um, uh, uh, okay, troll plane. And I get rid of this. Give me a second, I'll get rid of this here. Let's do the same thing for the worker. And so the pod IP pools will still have the labels, but we have updated the peering policies to say we no longer want to advertise pod IP pools. And we can verify that with the BGP peers. You see we're not advertising anything here, right? For either of the nodes. And now if we go back and try pinging again, not there. And if we patch it, add it back in, BGP peers, we're advertising those networks again, and we're reachable again. So pretty simple demo. Uh, we didn't uh, have a, a lot of time to get into uh, all the different details of the BGP control plane. So please take uh, some time, check out uh, the documentation. Um, and if you'd like to get involved, with, uh, we'd love more involvement, not only in BGP control plane, but uh, as many of you know, Cilium uh, has a lot of great functionality and we're always looking for uh, more help, whether it be with submitting code, fixing issues, documentation. Um, it's a great community to work in. Um, and we appreciate your time. Please uh, use the QR code to provide feedback. And do we have any time for questions? Thank you. And yes, we can get one or two questions. Hi, I have one comment to the previous slide. Uh, the weekly meeting is at 4 o'clock uh, European time, not at 5. <laughs> And uh, one question, uh, what are your, your other plans uh, with the BGP? So what do you plan on doing next? Because to, uh, me, to me, it seems that everything is now done. We can, we can use it with multiple. 
Yeah, so do you want to start off with kind of the BGP roadmap? You, you want to touch on that? Yeah, so we obviously want to like uh, expand the use cases of the BGP, uh, but the, uh, at the same time, what I, what I personally want to like a, uh, like a, like a start doing here uh, is like improve the like operators experience uh, like the so in the in the demo we use the like a BGP uh, CLM CLI to like check this BGP status uh, we we want to expand it to like a uh, like a allow you to check the the advertised route or received route details uh, and also the like a like we want to like a sub, I personally want to support the like a BGP number numbered, uh, which uh, allows you to like a uh, uh, like a reduce the number uh, of the BGP pure in policy uh, dramatically. Uh, then, uh, yeah, that's it for uh, that's pretty much for uh, for me for now. Do you have anything, Daniel? Uh, well, just a, a heads up as well as there there is a lot of work that is uh, just starting to happen with. Uh, I don't know what the official term is, but BGP control plane version two, let's call it, right? And, and so what you saw today was a single uh, API kind, Cilium BGP peering policy that did everything, right? BGP control plane version two, uh, we've gotten feedback from early adopters, and part of that feedback was, wow, it'd be great if, if this was a little more composable. Right, and, and so uh, BGP uh, control plane version two, the initial alpha APIs just landed, I think, two weeks ago. Yeah. And post KubeCon, uh, a big focus is going to be on that BGP control plane, plane V2 using multiple API kinds to kind of construct the BGP environment. Yeah, I'm following that. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for your presentation. I have two questions. Number one, um, how does your, one of the use cases was to expose the IP address on the pod publicly, right? How does this compare to just using ingress? You know, you have a service that show, exposes the pod and you use ingress. Your ingress is reachable from anywhere. I suppose to hitting the pod directly. How does, how's, I don't, just, just for my understanding. Yeah, so uh, with, Cil with Cilium uh, and BGP control plane, different ways to, to get things done, right? We can go ahead and use a standard service IP. We can use a pod CIDR or the multi-pool IPAM and expose those pod IPs directly. And we've gotten feedback from users that want that functionality. And you say public, it doesn't necessarily have to be public though, right? It's just outside of the cluster and there's many, uh, um, environments where even outside of the Kubernetes cluster is still considered private. Okay. And that could be, okay, I want, I have multiple, I've got VPCs everywhere, right? Virtual private connections throughout my whole organization with different clusters. And I want those pods to communicate directly so that they don't have to go through a service IP. Okay. Um, so to your, I guess directly to your question, is it exposing outside of Kubernetes? doesn't always mean to the public, okay. and we want to be able to, uh, to achieve those use cases. 